Welcome back to the Texas music scene, folks. You know, blues musician Mike Zito relocated from St. Louis to just outside of Beaumont, Texas, as part of starting a new life for himself. This musical journey is the impetus of the 2013 album, Gone to Texas, a project that brought Zito a ton of critical acclaim, and more importantly, a larger fan base. Now, well, here's his take on the album. The uh, title track, the song Going to Texas, is the song itself. But the, really, the idea I had was like, this is a great idea for an album. It's different. I mean, a lot of people write songs about Texas, and they're from Texas, and they're good songs. I'm not from Texas, so I'm really kind of looking at it from another point of view. From all the different types of music, the, the way that, especially in Southeast Texas, the way the blues and the Cajun and the country and swamp pop, and they got all this music, it all kind of mixes up. Being from somewhere else, that's totally different and, and unique. But I had a lot of different, you know, a lot of different ideas, and, and it kind of come together for a good album. And in the album, you get this whole kind of outsider's perspective of, uh, I've moved to Texas, I've gone to Texas, and this is what I see. It's, it's beautiful, you know? Well, my net just don't add up. She got the number way over my head. Going to Texas is my fifth studio, like an actual uh, label uh, release. When I was getting started, I would just write songs. I want to play guitar, I want to scream, try to you know get something, do it fast. And I realized, you know, uh, man, the best, the best songwriters, best story, they're storytelling. I mean, the song's the story, the album's the story. There's something there that really draws people in. So I've been really following, thinking about like how to tell it. So I wanted to tell that story. So I, I brought, you know, I, I got this idea together. We brought it in. So I wanted to produce this album myself. So I picked the band, it's, it's the wheel. The, some of these guys I've been playing with for, for years, and some of the guys like Lewis Stevens on the piano and uh, Scott Sutherland on the bass, uh, you know, I had met along the way. The other guys is Jimmy Carpenter on the saxophone, Rob Lee on the drums. I, I just like, man, that's my guy. All right, that's the guy. When I get ready to do this, that's the guy. So when it came time to do the album, I said, all right, I know these guys are gonna play great together. And it was like, I want, I want to get this band and develop a, a sound, a style, a feel. And then we went to Dockside Studios in Maurice, Louisiana. It's right outside of Lafayette. And uh, we recorded the whole, you know, we did it live, recorded in five days straight, set up live, press record, tried to get it, you know, as raw as possible, as real as possible, not a lot of you know, overdub or anything like that. About seven days, you know, we did the whole record from beginning to end. I got this feeling like, man, you know, like today, like the first take's gonna be the best. Even if it's got a little something in it that ain't right, there's a feeling that happens the first time. Once you start doing it over and over again, it starts losing its the emotion that you start thinking too much, you know? You can shout fat a bit, you push up against the grave. You know, man, one of my, my favorite songs of the album is called uh, I Never Knew a Hurricane. We had the great Susan Cowsell came and she sang back up on this, on this album. So she came and sang and we kind of do that song as a duet. And I just, man, I love singing with her. Like I said, I'm not from, from Southeast Texas. I'm not from the Gulf Coast. And I moved there and then we had Hurricane Rita and Hurricane Katrina hit when I had only been there a couple years. If you don't live near that, I grew up in St. Louis, I mean, I knew what hurricane was, you don't even think about it. Not like you do when you live where you gotta evacuate or get out, you know? People become so emotional, man. I mean, it's like their whole life changes because they don't know if they're gonna, I mean, they might lose everything and all of a sudden people will just put aside, they don't care about their house no more, it's just family, get your kids, we gotta go. I'm an observer. So watching and seeing all this, it's, it's a really, uh, it's very unique, emotional experience. The 
There's, a, there's another song called Death Row. It's more of like an old blues song, uh, playing a, a, a dobro acoustic, you know, a national guitar. Just kick drum and, and hi-hat, and we kind of trying to capture like old, kind of an older blues sound. You know, I, I got cleaned up, and I, I met, a, met a lot of different people, and I was, uh, we take recovery meetings into prisons. I met this minister. He was doing work with the death penalty. He was working with guys in Huntsville, and going over there and like trying to get them to be comfortable with their, you know, what's what's coming. And, and uh, man, it was really heavy. Man, this this guy's doing some real work. I'm like, you know, I'm like trying to play guitar in tune. This guy's spending his days going and working with these guys. And now I'm on death row. I'm tied to the red. So to put this album out and have that exposure and have it be so well received, it, it's really, it's been awesome. Especially to have that story and that idea and to kind of go at it and go, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do and see if people like it and then have them, some people like it, it's pretty good, you know?